So hello. Um, you find me wandering through a park north of Cardiff, a place called Kevin On. And those of you who know your railways around Cardiff will know that there used to be a railway station here that uh, was used for the park. And it's known that it closed in 1986, September 1986, and was replaced by Liz Vane and Thornhill, which is an eighth of a mile down, down the track. But when did it open? And why did it open? So I'm going to look a little bit of history of this lovely old park and why it was built in the first place. And a little bit of history of Kevin on station and the mystery of why it was opened in the first place. So what's the story? Well, there's a gentleman called Ernest Albert Prosser. He was the general manager of the Romney Railway and he was quite wealthy, to say the least. He bought a big patch of land north of Cardiff and decided to convert a chunk of it into what he called the Dingle. And that is what we know as Kevin on Park today. Now, the reason he did it was because he had a son called Cecil who had tuberculosis. And he wanted somewhere for Cecil to go where he could sit in the, effectively out in the sunshine enjoy the fresh air and be away from the pollution of the town. And that's why he developed it. So one of the things that Prosser built was this summer house, which uh, has undergone a little bit of restoration for its centenary. If you notice this stone here, it says EAP, Ernest Prosser, CP for Cecil Prosser, and uh, a couple of other initials which I'll need to look up. And one of the nice features of this, apart from this plaque here, this banner here saying, date on it. It's just in the back here. Some reliefs showing the golf course, showing Prosser, showing the swimming pool. If I swing around here, Taff Valley Railway logo, the Romney Valley Railway Company logo, Kevin on Tunnel and Kevin on Station, Romney Loco and the crest of the Cardiff Railway Company. Prosser also constructed uh, a swimming pool, a uh, natural pool which he put ceramic tiles on the bottom about six foot deep and he had some railway sleepers close by uh, which he made into a changing room. Well if you're going to be general manager of a railway you may as well make use of it. And it became a place where Cecil could sit and effectively convalesce for some years to come. Sadly, Cecil passed away in 1922, and uh, about 11 years later, in 1933, uh, Ernest passed away as well, uh, just in his early 60s. The land basically passed, passed on to some grandnephew who really wasn't interested in it in any way, shape or form, and after rumming and ahhing what to do, it thought maybe he'd sell it. Now, at the time, there was this army of gardeners around the place looking after it and when you look around you can see why and the head gardener got wind that it was going to be up for sale so he contacted Cardiff Council and said do you want to buy it and they said yeah absolutely um, entered into negotiations and it entered into council house in 1944 so here you have a park outside of Cardiff in the middle of the country beautifully landscaped with its own railway station job done everybody's happy the question is, why was the station opened in the first place in 1915? The railway was opened in the 1870s. The park didn't uh, pass over to the councils in the 1940s. And Ernest, even with his clout as general manager of the Rumney Railway, wouldn't have had the power to turn around and say, I want a station on my land. What was it all about and why did it open then? So the reason they built the station is this 
and in actual fact, this. This is Lanishan Golf Club. You see a group of people that approached uh, Pross and said, look, you know, you've got this land up there. We want a golf, we want to build a golf club. Can we build a golf club? And he went, yeah, I'll rent you the land to build the golf club. And as part of that, that enabled the railway station to be put in place. And at the end of the day, Ennis wasn't going to argue, he's got the railway station he wants to be able to shift goods, materials in to develop his estate. Win-win situation, very happy Ernest. So as it comes through the park, you can veer slightly off to the left. <laughs> Busy park, a lot of people around. And what we can see is this bit here. If you wander in this little enclave here, this would have been the path down to the platforms and the bridge would have ended here. So on the other side of the cutting now, um, the railway beneath me down to my right, quite a good path actually, nicely balanced off and train disappearing down there. Let's see if we can find any relics, any remnants of the entrance to the station on this side. In fact, just walking down a little bit further, you can see this nook here, which leads to a fence. This would have been uh, the entrance to the bridge, the footbridge that went over. So it would have gone over here, and then uh, we will walk down here. I'm going to attempt to go see how far down this path I can go. I don't think it goes down very far before we start reaching bushes. But again, um, good path underfoot. Um, but this is the closest I think I'm going to be able to get to the station. These these fences are put in with the <laughs> with the impact very very simply. Um, do not thou shall not pass. But um, let's see how far I can get down here. The answer is to about here before I start hitting bushes. There is a geocache around here somewhere. It may be the reason this path is so clear. It's around here. I'll fire up the old app in a minute and see what's what. But you can just make out through the trees there. This is where the station was. And this would have been the ramp down to the platform, which would have taken people on the trains back from the park into Cardiff. Interestingly, there's some, you can see the trees here growing, but this, this is definitely masonry underneath. So there's probably been a wall heading back up here, back up towards the, uh, back up towards the footbridge. So just come down a little further and um, looking for the geocache. And if you look over there, there's the steps up. So that would have been the steps up from the platform. So roughly where I was taking the video uh, with the green fences that came out of the park, that would roughly be where those steps would actually lead up from the platform. Today, if you want to go to Kevin on Park, you come here to Lisbane and Thornhill. In fact, the uh, notice is proudly pronounced. This is the stop here for Kevin on Park. You see, this this station, as you can see, is much larger than Kevin on ever was. And as the roads developed and more people started coming up by cars, Kevin on became a request stop. And being only a three car coach stop, six car trains had a bit of a problem stopping there. Um, you had to, if you were getting off, be in a position where you were in the front carriages, for example. And at night, there were the odd occasion, very rare, but the odd occasion, where the train would overshoot and either leave passengers standing or had to reverse. 
The notices went out around the valleys and in 1986 uh, they decided it was time to close Kevin on and instead opened this station here. I stand at the very end of Lisvane platform within the legal limits and zoom. You can just about make out in the middle of the picture the overbridge at Kevinon station, the pillar in the middle of the track. Eighth of a mile up the line, lying dormant, gradually being returned to nature, being overgrown. Passengers no more. And there we have it the mystery of Kevinon station, built at the behest of a golf club and also to service the local landowner and general manager of the railway uh, to make sure that his land was built on and it is a beautiful place. The station served the city well and from 1944 when it opened uh, to the public right through to 86 when the station closed it shipped a lot of people up here to enjoy this beautiful park and if you're ever in Cardiff I would certainly recommend you pay a visit. So thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the images and the views of this beautiful park and uh, story of the station, a little bit about its history and uh, why it opened in the first place. In the meantime, I will be out doing more railways and when the weather starts getting warmer, doing longer walks, but as we head into the winter, I might hibernate for a bit. But in the meantime, please like, subscribe, share, tell your friends I'm here and uh, I'll be back for more railways soon. Thank you. Bye.